your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy walk. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> 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 30 seconds remaining. Like, you know, what could you say? I doubt it will stand up to something. I have any disrespect for you at all. I was very confused by the title, Everything Everywhere All at Once, because that's also what we call it when Ash takes off his shirt. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. What's up, boys and girls? Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. We are on YouTube, Rockfin, Rumble, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Podbean even. So if you like what you hear, leave a kind review, won't you please? I want to do a quick shout out to our sponsor for this episode. Cue the jazzy ad read music. Ooh, the holidays. And that means holiday stress, holiday anxiety. Uh, Maybe you need a little mommy time, a little daddy time. Maybe the wine's not cutting it. (laughs) That's where CBD comes in. I really enjoy uh, their CBD products. They are number one for smokable. Ooh, that's a stinky one. Number one for smokable CBD flower and Delta 8. Uh, Their products help with relaxation, sleep, feeling good, and more. Uh, I love their CBD. I hate calling them joints because they're not going to make you high. But uh, I guess they are joints. They come in different blends like pre-rolls. That's what we call them, pre-rolls. They come in different blends like relax, create, hustle, peace, energy, dream. So whatever you want to do with your day, Cushy Dreams has you covered. But not only do they have these sweet, sweet pre-rolls, they also have gummies. That's right. Treat yourself. These are Delta 9 THC gummies. They are the real deal OG THC. They ship legally to you. Each gummy contains 10 milligrams of THC, and they come in four euphoric flavors, strawberry, sour watermelon, green apple, and tangerine. Uh, Pop one, take it in the bathtub, I don't know. YOLO, get yourself some relaxy time. Maybe your family's stressing you out. Maybe the kids won't shut up. Maybe, you know, someone's complaining. Uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, Kanye West is stressing you out and you need <laughs> you need some CBD in your life. Go to CushyDreams.com. That's K-U-S-H-Y Dreams.com. At checkout, use promo code CMP to get 20% off your next order. Good on your first order, second order, etc. Get your gummies with promo code CMP and get your 20% off today. Yes, cushy dreams. Get yourself a one-way ticket to relaxy town. Please stop singing, Chrissy. Okay, I will. Guys, I have some comedy shows coming up. If you live in Jersey this Saturday, I will be headlining in Vineland, New Jersey at Casey Ray's Sports Bar and Pub. I'll be out there with Terry McNeely who is uh, like a mag. I guess he brands himself like a MAGA comedian. He's a good time. He's very funny. And then I will be at Gino Bisconti's birthday show. It's going to be in New York City, December 29th. I'm not 100% sure on the club yet. Maybe New York Comedy Club, maybe Stand Up New York. I'm going to figure it out soon. Then we got DabbleCon coming up in early February. Um, Rochester, New York, Comedy at the Carlson, February 3rd and 4th. There'll be a stand-up comedy show, live podcast tapings, a meet and greet, the Dabby Awards. Uh, If you're on the Stuttering John subreddit and you listen to Who Are These Podcasts or uh, myself or Steel Toe Morning Show, you should be at DabbleCon. Uh, Then I'll be doing a weekend in San Diego, February 24th and 25th at the Mic Drop Comedy Club. Get your tickets at ChrissyMayer.com. And I'm always booking more dates. And if there's a club near you, that you really want me to perform at tag them tag me on twitter 
uh, sometimes they notice those things. Anyway, our next guest is someone you should notice. Wow, what a slick, what a slick segue I did. Uh, <laughs> she is the host of Allison at Large at OAN. Welcome to the show, Allison Steinberg. Hello, Allison. Hello, Chrissy. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, this is so great. Thank you for bringing cleavage to the show. Uh, <laughs> I just I didn't have the energy for it today. <laughs> I had to look good earlier in the day, so that's the only reason. Otherwise, I'd I'd be bumming it in a t-shirt. <laughs> do you at OAN do they have a makeup crew there that like does you up, or do you have to just learn how to do it yourself? Well, that's a great question. They actually do have a makeup crew, but prior to my career change, um, prior to being at OAN, I was actually a makeup artist for a living. So no way. Yes. That is amazing. Gosh, <laughs> sorry guys. The whole episode is going to be about this now. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a man, you can just tune out. Uh, no, that's really neat. I, I feel like there is a world where I too become a makeup artist because I just love, I've always loved going into like Sephora or Ulta or whatever, and just like finding the nearest gay and learning <laughs> as much as I can about different techniques. And I don't know, I just find it really interesting. It's very fun. I obviously enjoy it quite a lot myself. Um, I used to work in Hollywood, in the belly of the beast. No uh, way. Are you from there? Are you from California? Yeah. So I'm from uh, San Diego originally. I moved around a little bit uh, throughout my childhood. And then I ended up in LA. Uh, the second I turned 18, I moved out there to pursue a career as a makeup artist because I wanted nothing more than to work, you know, on the big screens and do film and television and whatnot. Um, so I did that. And it was quite a journey. Um, I uh, <clears throat> loved it for a long time. It was really fun. I met a lot of great people. Um, but after all the COVID stuff happened, it kind of threw a wrench in my whole plan. And I quickly found myself um, not really able to tolerate a lot of the people that I worked with. So, wow. Uh, <laughs> Who's okay? I need to know who like are some of the most famous people you've done makeup for? Um, admittedly, I haven't done any huge names. I was kind of working my way up the ladder. I was getting in on like some, you know, smaller films and TV sets. Um, I was on the trajectory to get there. I was, you know, getting offers to do a lot of these big reality shows that kind of actually Ooh. up over the COVID period when everyone, you know, was supposedly locked down. Meanwhile, Hollywood's still filming and, uh, doing hair and makeup and it's all a big charade. Um, yep. <laughs> But I had to do Nancy Pelosi still getting her hair done. Gavin exactly. Newsom still going out to dinner. Everybody <laughs> different rules for different people. <laughs> yes, rules uh, for thee, but not for me. Anyhow, uh, she well, I Nancy Pelosi that whole thing was crazy. Uh, but um, yeah, I just couldn't stand that anymore. All of these, you know, crazy COVID stuff. Uh, was getting in the way of the, the work. I was still getting job offers, but they were requiring me to provide proof of the vaccine. And uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about that on here. That just don't That's okay. I say it all the time. I, I talk about it all the time. I lost my job in at a corporate media company uh, last December because I wouldn't get vaccinated. And oh, wow. I, like, honestly, one of these like meant to be things because I've always wanted to leave my job. I just was oh, like, wow. like afraid to be without insurance, never thought yeah. I would money to live without it like my parents drilled into my head growing up that I always have to have a job like I you know they didn't really believe that I could make it as anything other than like being somebody's assistant so Aww. that was a lot to get over but I talk about that like probably too much the chat's probably like yeah we know we know you wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm interested. That's very cool. I'll have to go look up your whole backstory after we're done here. But well, I actually haven't talked about. I really need to. I need to find a way to talk about it because it's talk very, it. it's very juicy and spicy. And I, uh, they tried to get me to sign an NDA oh. for ten grand, and I was like, no, I want to talk about this because yeah. I, I have proof that it was politically motivated as well. But they were able to get me on the vax thing. So wow. Uh, I know. I got to just figure out how. Maybe you're a good person to talk to about that later. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely revisit that if you would like. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I ultimately had to, well, I was getting the job offers, as I said. I was, um, you know, kind of working my way up and getting to where I wanted to be in the height of all the COVID stuff. And then when they started requiring the, the jab stuff and, and 
you know, constant muzzle wearing. I just had to put my foot down. I literally oh. could not do it. And um, my friends thought I was crazy. I mean, I my best friend um, is a gay guy who I, who's a hairstylist. And uh, we work together on all these jobs. And, and we were like, so happy because we were finally making it. And he thought I was oh, insane. Wow. I mean, he's very like minded. Uh, I know it's, you know, an unpopular belief that there are gay conservatives, <laughs> but there are. And uh, he is he's very similar in the thought process. But he was just kind of thinking I was crazy for not going through with the jobs. He's like, what are you doing? Like, you know, this is crazy. This is what we've always wanted to do. And he Aww. simultaneously admired me for putting my foot down and drawing the line. But I mean, it was, it's crazy because I, I couldn't bring myself to do it just morally. It didn't feel right. Wow. I, couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I was very outspoken at the time on the internet because my whole business, other than these side gigs that I was getting at these reality shows were being just completely shut down. Um, so like I was just going to these protests and these rallies all the time, wow. speaking out about how we need to fight back and don't comply. And, and, and this is in California. Cool. You're going to rallies. <laughs> Yeah, that's ballsy. But like, I feel you because like, I've been here in New York the whole time. And my, people are plenty of people are still wearing masks on su on the subways, which is uh, wild. It, but I know. it's crazy. And I'm sure you have a very similar experience being in New York, because I mean, that might be the one place that is as bad as California. But yeah, it was crazy during the lockdowns. I mean, I was shocked because I didn't think that anyone else would be in the same you know, on the same wavelength as me. I thought that I was the only one, especially coming from the beauty industry where it is obviously very heavily liberal. And uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. So it was very shocking to know that there were other people in the city of Los Angeles that agreed with me. So, uh, you know, to my dismay, I found all of these protests and rallies that were happening and they just grew bigger and bigger every time I connected with a great group of people on social media and it started out they invited me to a recall newsom um rally and i it was the first thing i'd ever really gone to and i was like oh my god is this a trap like what's going on here wow <laughs> it was yeah scary. they're gonna like, be like they're gonna have, to have out the area drones out they're gonna be like marking down like who all everyone is yeah yeah <laughs> so i uh I proceeded with caution, but then I quickly realized that, you know, everyone there just was fed up just like I was. They all lost their jobs and they all wanted this stuff to be over. So, it, you know, it was a great experience. I met a lot of people from there. It just evolved into rally after protest after rally. And then every time I would go, these groups would get larger and larger. And next thing you know, there's these huge, massive Beverly Hills rallies full of thousands of people that flew in from out of state wow. to be there were just like taking over the streets of LA marching through pissing off all these dumb muzzled liberals and it was just like that's awesome it was insane it was so cool it was like the best it was the highlight of my life like I almost miss the the height of the COVID that time just because of that I had a good COVID too did you struggle with like like as far as like your family and your close friends, because I feel like for a lot of people, a lot of people ultimately got swayed or pressured to get it because of who was surrounding them. Like they might have held off at first and then yeah. it just goes to show you it's so important who you surround yourself with. And I can't imagine there are ve very many like based makeup artists <laughs> or, or like just generally people in California. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's there's actually a few now that I've, you know, gotten to where I am. I, uh, I've come in contact with a few and that is reassuring. But as for my family, uh, my mom's actually a raging liberal herself and she <gasps> is a nurse. Oh, wow. She is, like the biggest chill for big pharma in the world. And, you know, initially How do you when deal I, with that. Wow. It, it was crazy. It was such a weird time because her and I always like, well, there's been, you know, good times and bad times. But for the most part, at the time we were getting along when all the COVID stuff first started happening, she, you know, was started getting weird about it. And then when she realized how I felt about it, she was not okay. She actually thought I had lost my mind and gone completely insane and joined a cult. And she actually thought that I needed to like be institutionalized. <gasps> wow. <laughs> Um, but obviously throughout the whole thing, she was pushing me to get the jab and I refused. And every day I'd get a text. It's safe and effective. Just this regurgitated BS wow. from media. And I just couldn't believe it. Like she's telling me I'm in a cult. 
sounds to me like she's the one in the cult. So do you ever, after the fact, send her stuff now that more info has come out? You go, still safe and effective, mom. You still think that <laughs> it's funny you ask that because I want nothing more than to just send her all of this stuff every day. But unfortunately she blocked me. So I don't have the <laughs> blocked by your mom. Oh my God. My mom, yeah. where did she block you on Facebook or was she on Twitter or like Instagram? Facebook and apparently text because I did try to send her some stuff more recently and I, it doesn't blocked deliver. by your own mother. Oh yeah. my God. So mom, if you're watching this, uh, unblock me. So Please unblock talk. your daughter. My God. Are you an only child? No, I have a brother too. Who's also in agreement with me and, and she doesn't like that either. I think he's did probably he get blocked. blocked? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Unblock your children. I mean, that just goes to show how Steinberg mind disease is, right? I mean, mothers are blocking their own children. How crazy is that? But it was encouraged. It, it was very much. It was very much encouraged by everywhere in the media and people. And it, it people were they love to divide us up in, into groups, you know. Yeah. And uh, there were so many i'll never forget like the cosmo or l all these like trash magazine articles about like oh why you need to break up with your trump supporting dad over thanksgiving and shit like that like why you need to ditch your trump supporting boyfriend oh, gross that's actually hilarious that you say that because i gotta show you this i just, <laughs> like, you have one right I just here. bought this today in the mail uh this there's a new conservative dating app and they <gasps> oh this, what's it called um it's called the right stuff right oh my god it says break up with your liberal boyfriend yes your liberal boyfriend dump your liberal boyfriend i would you know i'm gonna come off like a hypocrite but i would proudly wear one of them <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna have to order one i, I would wear that shit to the gym yeah wow I mean, but i don't think like uh, anything that's coming from the right or the center right now is is truly nothing compared to how things were for two years where it was like not only in vogue but encouraged to yeah. stigmatize demonize anybody who was anti-jab yeah uh, and all of it absolutely i mean and now they want amnesty too right i mean they want to just forgive and forget but can we forget all the hell they put us through for how how many years i mean it just it never ended i don't know about you you probably experienced the same thing but in in la i mean i was kicked out of every store i mean i couldn't even go grocery shopping because i was being kicked out of every store because i refused to wear the damn mask so. i'll never get the dirty looks and like i would just like be out with like my uh my boyfriend and he'd be like no we're like we're just we're not gonna do it like don't don't cave i'd be like yeah and after you, the more you practiced it the more bold you would get and the less yes. you would kick the more times you do it you realize oh nothing is gonna happen to me people are gonna <laughs> yell at you and you just have to like look the other way and i would I would start just like not wearing it on the trains. And I'd be like, you know what? Oh, it says I'll get a $50 fine from the railroad people. Like they yeah. just never did it. They just, get, <laughs> I know they just, uh, give me dirty looks. So I'd be like, <laughs> or I would just drink my drink for a really long yes. time. Like, especially on flights. I'd be like, Oh, absolutely. It's just like, like, well, I guess I'm the world's slowest drinker. <laughs> Another seltzer, please. Wow. So yeah. you're blocked by your mom. <laughs> um, and you, you mentioned before we went live that during COVID you had sort of like an awakening, like in a religious sense. Yes. So obviously, well, okay. So to back up a little bit, I grew up for those who are watching my last name is Steinberg. So everyone assumes that I'm Jewish. I am of Jewish descent. Uh, I was not raised Jew in Jewish faith. I wasn't really raised with any faith because my parents didn't really ever instill any of that in me we never really went to church with the exception of like christmas maybe um but it wasn't you know anything that was practiced regularly so i just kind of grew up not knowing anything um other than the fact that my dad kind of instilled some good conservative or more traditional values in me as a child um my mom was kind of on the same wavelength too back in the day before she became a mind controlled liberal uh but uh, as I grew up and grew older and was working it in the liberal Hollywood scene, you know, there were things that bothered me, but I never really um, put my could put my finger on what it was that I didn't like or I didn't mesh with because I was always like kind of an outsider in these groups of people. Um, 
but I never really quite knew what it was. So that's why I'm actually so grateful for all the COVID stuff, because it really allowed me to do the work within myself to realize who I really am and what my purpose here is. And obviously, you know, during COVID, it was seemingly a I mean, it was the first time I really noticed and and took mental note of all of the evil and corruption and uh, just outright attack on on normal good people. Uh, and I really truly felt like it was a battle of good versus evil. And uh, you know, after go- oh no, did her phone die? Uh oh, you're muted. You muted yourself. Oh no. <laughs> They're taking you out, Allison. They muted you. <laughs> Let's see. Is there a button? Okay. Okay. No, I can't. I can't unmute you. Your It says your mic is not connected. <laughs> I think I'm just going to read her lips. I'm so sorry. She's saying. Maybe try leaving and then coming back. See I'm so works. sorry. Oh, you're, you're back. Me. You're back. You're good. I've done it 400 times. Don't worry. My phone rang and then it screwed everything up. Should I turn wow. off some notification? Maybe. Or do an airplane mode. How do I? Oh, good God. This is potentially going to screw everything oh, up. Oh, no. It's okay. I'm like such a boomer with my phone. I'm. I think, I'm, See, I think I'm like 50 freaking years old. It's your it's your mom. She's calling you to like oh, you know, God. I'm blocking you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Allison. You were right. I have myocarditis now. <laughs> oh. Uh no, it wasn't mom. Shucks. Um <laughs> hopefully she's still around. Just kidding. Um so when's the last time you've talked to her? It's been a long time since before. Well, I guess it was like in 2020 at some point. I don't really remember. Wow. Um, that must be hard. It's all right. I mean, she kind of showed her true colors, you know, and if she's just unwilling to have a conversation with me, like that tells me everything I need to know. It's sad, certainly, because I think that, you know, as grown adults, we should be able to have conversations even if we, if we don't agree with each other. Um, and that's part of why I'm so outspoken is because I want to hear everyone's point of view. I want to understand why you think the way you do. I want to have a better, um, you know, realm of knowledge as to why you've come to the conclusions that you have come to. And I just think that if we can't even do that, then we have a lot of work to do. And I just find it fascinating. So, uh, I, I don't know why people, I mean, it just goes to show how brainwashed people are and how, successful the media has been in dividing us and i, I just yeah. think it's really sad i mean my dad got it too and like i bet he's annoyed because he got it because like who like this woman he was dating at the time like pressured him into it like oh we're gonna travel we needed to see our grandkids and he, he's like loki like doesn't even care if he sees grandkids like he just <gasps> like i think he just like did it to get some ass and uh they're not <laughs> together anymore so oh like, well, that's I don't think he's that I don't think he got boosted, but I'm just like, he, I just can't talk to him about anything because he's so angry and he's like, wow. there's no, there's no just shooting the shit with him. It all just loops into whatever he's angry about and it's all his like unresolved issues. So it's like, it's just not fun for me because it feels like yeah. I don't even need to be there. Like he could just be yelling at whoever. So, right. Yeah. I feel like that's a common problem with, I mean, my parents <laughs> too, or people of yeah. that generation, right? Like they just. There's a lot of unresolved traumas, and for some reason, that creates a, a huge barrier in the communication process. So, yeah, it's very strange. Um, I forget where I was in my story, but we, you're talking about, I was, oh, yeah, I kept bringing up your mom. Um, <laughs> yes, you had kind of like you kind of came around on Christianity during COVID. Yes, because I realized it was about a battle of good versus evil, and I started, um, I just knew there was some like demonic satanic energy surrounding this. And I didn't really know why. And obviously a lot of these people that I met at the protests were Christians and they were preaching, uh, you know, messages from the Bible. And I, uh, you know, thought for the first time in my life, well, this is interesting. Like if my moral 
ethics line up to theirs and we have obviously a very similar mindset and a lot of things perhaps this is something i should consider so ultimately covid led me to jesus i picked up well actually to add more to the story i i kind of knew in the back of my head you know this is something that i want to explore but i had so many questions and doubts even and i was like am i am i being brainwashed because at this point i'm just questioning everything am i mm-hmm. you know on the right track is this what i'm supposed to be doing am i just like you know, going from one like hive mind mentality to another. It's really good that you question that because yeah. like it's so easy for us to be like, oh, whatever side I'm on is the right side. And you look yeah. for things, you look for, you, you unconsciously seek out points that it's the confirmation bias, right? So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, if I'm going to be preaching this message of truth and getting to the root of this evil and and finding real meaning in life then i then yes you have to question everything and if i'm going to be telling people that in my message then i certainly have to be doing the same so after my you know extended period of time of questioning um i kind of was feeling myself aligning with christianity but i didn't really ever do the work and it's obviously still a work in progress i'm by no means saying that i'm like a, a perfect christian because that is very far from the truth but it's been an amazing learning process. And what really solidified everything for me was the fact that I was almost resistant to it in, in a sense, because I wanted to dive into it, but something in me, it was like some demon inside of me that was trying to push me away from diving in. And my friend who was actually very Christian growing up, uh, got me a Bible when I started talking to her about some of this stuff. No. And, um, and I really appreciated it, but I always felt guilty because it was sitting in my bookshelf for months untouched and i every day i would be like oh i should probably pick that up but i never did and then that's happened to me yeah that's like i had a very similar thing really so interesting yeah like (laughs) i just felt like was hesitating and like for months was like i need to buy a bible i'm really curious about this stuff because much like you it's like i was like you know yoga spiritual forever and Uh like i was always higher power all about that But yeah, yeah, something about like seeing, like really seeing such obvious evil in the world. And even like this week with like the Balenciaga shit, it's just, it's even more of a reminder, like, okay, when, when the evils in the world are made so obvious to you, it's almost like it calls the good in you to rise to the occasion. And you're like, whoa, clearly evil exists. So I I need to like, I need to fight for the other side because if, if you're neutral about it, if the evil's gonna win so exactly exactly and that is you nailed it i mean that's what led me to it and um and i think you know you can't have evil without there being good you can't have dark without light so i was just like you know it felt right to me but nothing ever fully finally pushed me to actually opening it up and and diving in so there was one day that i will remember for the rest of my life that i uh, just had this crazy epiphany where I, I, I just felt called to it. Like I had this like eye opening internal experience and I'm like, oh my gosh, I burst out crying, which I never cry. And I had all of the, I was just overwhelmed with emotion and I was led to go. Like I just felt inclined to go find the Bible. But I, at this point, my room was a disaster. I, everything was just a mess. I'd been meaning to clean it for days. I'd been putting it off. And I couldn't remember where the Bible was, even like in thinking about it internally, when I felt called to go find it, I was like, I I don't even know where it is, whatever. Then something within me like forced me to get up and directed me. Oh, I remember what it was. I, I was crying so much because I was like, so shaken up by my emotions and I needed Kleenex. And I went to go find the box of Kleenex and right next to it was the Bible sitting right there. Whoa, whoa. Yes. I thought so you were going to say like, you wiped your tears with the Bible. I'd be like, no, Allison, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I grabbed the Bible. I, you know, just started immersing myself in it. And I was up for hours. Like this happened. I mean, this was like the middle of the morning and I couldn't put it down. And at wow. the time I was living very close to the ocean. Um, and it was like, 
I, I'm never, I'm kind of a, a night owl and I don't really like waking up early. And, and in this moment, for some reason, I was like, you know what, you're up. You can go watch the sunrise. This will be beautiful. Like take the Bible, go to the beach, watch the sunrise. Aww. And so I felt called to go to the ocean and watch the sunrise. I drove down. I walked down with my Bible. I'm like have mascara wow. rolling down my face. <laughs> I'm just so emotional. And people are looking at you like, oh, this chick just had a one night stand. She's doing her walk of shame. And you're like, no, I'm having a really small moment. I'm like, don't worry. It's Jesus. Yeah. Don't um, worry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm walking to the beach in utter hot mess. And I find this spot to sit down at like the moment my butt hits the sand. I'm sitting just in this perfect moment with the sun rising like i watched the whole sun come up wow meanwhile off just not even that far away from me as the sun is rising dolphins are arching over the sunrise coming no out way of it was literally like a windows 95 screensaver <laughs> literally exactly <laughs> like <And> like <laughs> like literally diving in perfect <laughs> Oh it, my it God, was that's like really... picture perfect. You couldn't even make it up, but yes, it was. Yeah, and how do you say all oh, that? All that is a coincidence. Okay, sure. You're exactly. telling me there's not a yes. divine presence there. That's 100%. really cool. Yes. Yeah, so any doubts that I ever had were kind of you know reaffirmed in that moment, and it just it was a beautiful day, and I just feel so blessed to have experienced that, especially coming from me who was. Uh, such a doubter of all of it and and a sinner in so many ways being in Hollywood and and being a part of all of that party lifestyle for so many years I never thought that you know I would come to this point but if I can do it it's just further proof that pretty much anyone can wow and did you like start going to like services or anything like that or more just like looking into the bible I definitely started going to church every Sunday um I it took a while to find a good church, especially here in SoCal. You never really know what you're getting into. Um, but fortunately, I'm, again, so grateful for all of the amazing people that I met through the COVID journey because a lot of them being Christians told me about great places to go. And I connected and uh, went to a lot of the churches. Well, I tried several different ones and found one that I liked best. Um, so I would feel very fortunate to have found a great church. And uh, I try to go every Sunday. Obviously, things come up on occasion and I can't make it, but that is something I prioritize. And then I try to read the Bible every now and then. And still, I find myself doing the same thing, like reverting back into my old ways. Like, I know I should do it and I try to not, but then something will call me to it. Something in my life will happen. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like mm. I need the Bible. And it just keeps happening. And I'm just like, wow, so why keep pushing it away? It's like something within me that wants to push it away. But every time I come back to it, I am just, I know that it's right. So. And then, so after this happened, did you have a moment of like, well, I can't really go back to working in makeup. It just, <laughs> you know, like what was the moment where you're like, this feels like not part of who I am anymore. It was just honestly such a divine moment that I can't even explain. It all fell into place so perfectly. Um, the, the way the transition sort of happened not to be confused with any sort of gender. Transition. You look great. I can't even tell that you used to be a man. I, they did a great job with you. <laughs> I'm like so traumatized from that word talking. About I know. Time. I know. Even like, like all, even the word trans or transmission or like, I'm just like, I, I took know. my car to the mechanic the other day. I'm like, Haha, transmission. And he's like, I'm like, all right, just let me know how much money I owe you. Great. Okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm the same way. Um, the the whole um, you know the whole situation happened because I was as ironically as before the COVID stuff happened. I kind of was questioning, you know, like I'm getting older. I mean, I was still in my 20s at the time, but you know, when you're re mm -hmm. when you're nearing 30, it feels like you're really getting old. Um, death is death can happen at any moment. Yeah, it can. It's 30 exactly. and then death. <laughs> Pretty much. That's the mindset. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, uh, I kind of felt like I wasn't really aligning with that uh, group of people and that career path kind of as I was still in it and things were going well. I was like, is this really what I want to do? You know, I love doing makeup because the reason why I got into makeup is because I love making women 
look and feel their best. There's something that happens. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. You're all good. Um, uh, there's something that I just, I love seeing like a before and after it's such a satisfying thing to me and for women to, uh, you know, feel better and have more confidence from that is an incredible experience for me. And if I can help anyone, uh, like, I love that. So that was what got me into makeup in the first place when it evolved into this Hollywood thing, which seems like a dream in theory as a makeup artist. But when you're actually in the thick of it, working with all of these just completely stuck up gross people. And then you factor in the fact that uh, men are now thinking they're women and they want their makeup done to look like a girl. I'm just like, whoa, uh, what's happening? Not to mention the fact that all of the makeup suppliers are pushing the whole trans agenda. Oh, and it's like, why? It's yes. still more, at the end of the day, still chicks are your audience. Like it's all the women that are buying the, your products and a couple hundred mentally ill dudes, but like, <laughs> it's really mostly women still. Exactly. So you're like, I, I just... got to get out of this before the dude wants me to wax his balls. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I, uh, I, I was like questioning it, you know, I, even though I thought I was doing what I loved, I'm like, I don't know, this doesn't really sit right with me. And again, I hadn't really found Jesus at the time and I didn't really know where I stood politically. So I just was like, this is kind of off, but like, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I should be more tolerant, who knows. Uh, but <laughs> COVID just coincidentally happened at the perfect time because I had no choice but to shut down. And it gave me ample time to go into all of this deep research and start you know, digging things up that I would never really have time for because my whole life I'm just trying to get to the next level and, and chase this career that I thought was my dream. And, it, you know, with that and as an independent contractor, you don't really have a whole lot of free time. So um, COVID gave me the opportunity to do that. And in doing that, I realized, you know, I actually can genuinely come forward and say, I don't think this is what I meant to do. It's so superficial. It's, you know, you're dealing with such gross people who are so self-absorbed and who, who just are going after one thing and they'll do anything for money. And it just disgusted me. Mm. And so I felt, you know, I, I, there's, there's no way I can really go back to this when, if, and when things ever do resume to normal, um, I don't know if I can, I can do this anymore. So simultaneously, while I'm having these thoughts, I'm going to all the rallies and protests, as previously mentioned, and there was a guy who would always be at the events who would cover them, and he was just like an independent journalist who would always show up in a suit and a tie, and he'd have a little, a little microphone and a camera guy. It was just a two-man show, and his name was Jess Weber. He had a show <gasps> called- I met them, The Weber's Way, right? Yes! Yeah, yeah. I, I met them actually at January 6th, I think. Uh, well, actually in December- they were at the rally in DC in December, and then they were also there in January too. But it's just as soon as you said two man apparition, I'm like, I wonder if it's these guys. What the hell? Yeah, Are they're like serious? the nicest dudes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Wait, so that's you were so there? Fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's awesome. It's, that's part of my brand now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go inside or anything. Yeah. Uh, because the girl I was with, like, I just didn't want to get her in trouble. But I do remember watching people climb up the wall, and I was like. I could probably climb that wall, but I didn't. I just was like, I'll, I'll be good. <laughs> Damn, you are ballsy for saying that here. I love you. It was fun. <laughs> Everyone knows. It's like, it's very much out there. So <laughs> that's very cool. And I love that, you know, Jess, what a small world. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, yes, Weber's Way. For those of you watching, go check them out. I'm going to give a little plug for them because Jess is the man that I have to give credit for me being ultimately an OAN. Oh, so Jess would come to all of the rallies and the protests. He would always cover everything. He was, you know, he would always interview me. I became friends with him. I really loved that he was there in a time of, you know, censorship and fake news. He was actually out there getting the real stuff. And I thought it was amazing. Jess ended up moving out of uh, Los Angeles, uh, out of state. And in his departure, he kindly asked me to take over Weber's way. So what year was this? Was this 20 2021? Oh this wow. Was last year. So I started 
doing a little show of my own. I would go out, I did a lot of man on the street stuff. So I would go out, interview people, get them to weigh in on the hot topics and the COVID stuff. Because as I said earlier, I was just fascinated to hear other people's viewpoints and, and understand why people thought the way that they did. And it was really interesting, especially being in LA. I mean, you get such a mixed bag here. So uh, I did that and we had, you know, I wouldn't say it was like anything that took off, but we had a couple viral hits and uh, it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, from there, I had like a little, a tiny amount of, of content that I could make into a reel. So I did that and uh, I had a viral video of my own that actually got quite a bit of traction in the middle of the COVID stuff, which is ultimately what got me the job that I have now. Whoa, but what was the video? <laughs> Um, I was in the Starbucks drive through trying to get a tea um, as I was moving out of Los Angeles because I couldn't stand the liberal bullshit there anymore. So I got fed up and I was going to Orange County, which is a little bit more conservative. Um, the day I was moving, I had just had my Instagram, which garnered quite a large following um, from all of the man on the street stuff and the protests and the rallies and whatnot. Um, I had it shut down so it got completely deleted and this was literally the following following day i was moving out of la uh i needed a drink to stay hydrated during the move i'm in my car trying to get the damn drink and i pull up to the window and the cashier says that i need a mask on to get my drink in my own car and i'm just like you've got to be kidding me this is ridiculous so i went on my live on instagram on this new page i had just made with like 25 followers like i'm just starting over from scratch i do a live and i'm just like uh, no one's gonna see this but it'll be funny we'll see what happens well i did the live i went through the whole thing this idiot ultimately told me i'm sorry man he was just like this raging gay guy who was so liberal he's like i'm sorry man i really can't give you a drink right now if you're not gonna wear a mask and i'm like well i'm you're not wearing a, the mask. a drive through i'm in the drive through i'm in my own car i'm refusing to wear a mask because i'm in my vehicle and masks don't work. And this idiot is literally telling me, I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't hand you your drink if you're not wearing a mask. And I'm like, well, I don't have a mask. And he's oh like, God. well, I can hand you a mask. And I'm like, wait, what? what? <laughs> you can hand me a mask, but you can't hand me my drink? How does that make any did sense? Did you have the phone like here? Like, how are you recording this? Like, did I you have it? I had a little like, um, holder thing on my dashboard so okay. the phone was in there and it just got the whole thing captured perfectly so it might not have been obvious to him that you were recording yeah he didn't really know um but i got the whole thing on the live what a perfect all... moment <laughs> it Whoa. was iconic and it ended up just blowing up i mean like every major conservative account reposted it and i couldn't believe my eyes in that moment when i'm like restarting i'm kind of depressed i'm even thinking like what's the point of even having social media if I'm just going to get canceled, you know, who cares? Uh, and then I just like blew up overnight and oh, wow. crazy. How many more followers did, you, did it get you? I ended up getting like 60,000 followers. <laughs> and this is on your Instagram? Yes. Okay. Um, wow, that's cool. So after that happened, then all of these people wanted to interview me and have me on their shows. And I did that. One of the first ones to interview me was – one American news and the show uh, is the number one talk show there with Dan ball. It's called real America. He had me on to discuss the incident. And uh, from there, I just kind of stayed in contact with the folks over at one American news. And then they, a, a year later, they remembered who I was and uh, the owner had an opening for a show. And he's like, they were trying to think of who they would want to hire. And he, the owner was like, hey, what about that Starbucks girl? I really liked her. Oh. <laughs> and wow. so they offered me a job to have my own show. And I'm just like, how is this <gasps> real life? Like, wow. I, don't, I did not go to school for journalism. I don't even know really what the hell I'm talking about. I just have a very common sense, straightforward approach. I don't like bullshitting. I just want the world to resume back to some sense of normalcy. And next thing you know, I've got this show just speaking about the truth and, and calling out all the bullshit. So <laughs> did they tell you that's amazing. And this whole time I'm like, I'm like Googling Dan, like this guy's name is actually Dan Ball. Yeah. Why was, why would like, what a missed opportunity for him to not call his show like balls out America or something right? like that. Like something with ball. 
like Dan has balls or like balls Ballsy. for America. Balls for yeah. America. Yeah, ballsy, <laughs> ballsy America. I guess he wanted to be taken seriously. He was so when they seriously. when they <laughs> said you can do your own show, like what did they say? Like how much time you get? Did they give you any well, guidance? Yes, they told me all I have to do is make it 30 minutes. Um, didn't get a whole lot of direction because, uh, I mean, it, it, it's OAN, but it's like, you know, it's it's uh, an independently owned network. I mean, the owner, like, literally worked himself up from nothing. He came from nothing. He built the whole thing on his own, and he's been incredibly successful. But it is like a, a mom and pop type of deal there, so it's not – you know, super corporate or anything. Um, so it was very minimal direction. And I was unsure when they hired me, I'm like, do they want to hire me because I bring, you know, a bit of a controversial take to the whole thing and that'll help their, you know, ratings and whatnot. Or do they actually think that I'm like a legitimate journalist? <laughs> so I was really unsure and I never really got that clarified upon being hired. Um, so when I first started, I just kind of went balls to the wall <laughs> for lack of a better term and uh, went all out. And I, it didn't really go over as well as I'd hoped. Um, not to say they're censoring me by any means, but they just wanted me to polish it up a little bit. So it's been an amazing learning process to learn, you know, how to make it a little bit more professional while still being funny and cutting edge. I would definitely say I'm the most, you know, controversial show on the network and the most fun and lighthearted and have kind of a comedic undertone to it. Whereas all the other ones are quite serious and it's just a kind of a stereotypical five segment long talk show that just, you know, goes over the news. I definitely talk about the news, but I give my opinion and talk about why we need to care about it and give the common sense approach that I think all of us so desperately, um, you know, want to hear. So yeah, they've been great with it ever since. Um, it's been doing pretty well. Unfortunately, OAN is uh, being canceled from every <laughs> major carrier. Um, so wow, that, really? Yeah, we, we used to be um, broadcast through AT&T and DirecTV and Frontier on the East Coast, but we've been canceled from all of them now. So we're wow. strictly online. Um, so Damn. it's a bit of a transitional period, but, uh, you know, we got to evolve with the times, right? I like this. Warning, this program features impassioned opinions about the current state of affairs our world is coping with on a daily basis. We don't hold back when it comes to hammering politicians and government bureaucrats for their ineptitude and blatant disregard for the destruction of our country at their own hands. If you're not offended, you're not paying attention. If you're not outraged, you should be. <laughs> this is great. Wow. Thank you. So you can only watch this show at OANN.com. Yes, we're also on Rumble for the time okay. being. We're trying to switch over to the OAN. We just got this, uh, we just got it together. Uh, it's still kind of in the works and still being kind of troubleshooted, but we are in the process of creating an OAN live app. So that's where you're going to view all of the content. A lot of people didn't know, or from my understanding, a lot of people don't know that we actually do 24 hour news coverage. So there's regular news all throughout the day. And then starting at 3 PM, there's opinion based talk shows. So, um, I'm in that lineup somewhere, but uh, we have the talk shows after three. And then since we're pretty much obsolete now on the TV, we're moving on to just the online platform. So ultimately, you're going to want to get all of your um, OAN content on the OAN Live app, which can be downloaded in the app store. Um, but while we're in the transitional phase, you can still view all everything on the website and on Rumble as well. Okay. Wow. All right. Awesome. I'm going to get to a few of these. Super chats uh, from Capone. Who swatted Bob Levy in YouTube? Oh, I got swatted the other week. Um, it was a big week, twice in 12 hours or something. What? Um, we still don't know who it was. We still don't know. But everybody's okay. Yeah, it was crazy. But I guess it was inevitable. Because uh, I do this. A deranged lunatic. Allison, your mom is a real mother. Oh, like a mother. I don't know if this is meant to be a joke. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to be funny. Uh, Allison, I like your pronouns on Instagram. What are your pro? What's your Instagram? <laughs> it's my Instagram is Allison's Rage Page. It's Allison with one L, and my pronouns are fuck you. Yeah. Oh my god, I wasn't following you on Instagram. How embarrassing. <laughs> so you got you got sixty k on. Maybe I missed it. 
you're I got you're, 60k and after then the big viral hit and then I got deleted two additional times since then so we're back oh my on, god we're on the fourth page now I'm on my second Instagram wow I I can't keep up I think I lost my first one for I posted something this is like right before I, I was on Timcast so it was like March of 21 and I had posted got something about herbs in my IG story and they said that I was pushing like medical misinformation or something Are like you that. Me? Yeah, it was really crazy. Oh like, my. Uh, like you're trying to do alternate medicines or something. And I was like, Oh that's god, a what stretch. It? it was so gay. How dare you? <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, David Chandler, for the fifty dollars. Wow, uh -huh. you're the daddy of the night. Thank you. <laughs> Strange lunatic Chrissy Allison would be great for Simcast. Yes, you would if you're if you're free on a Sunday uh, at nine o'clock Eastern, yeah, I would love to have you on my Simcast show. I it's just love that a bunch of bimbos talking about life. <laughs> uh, you know, since I've been, you know, doing my show, I keep getting tagged in your stuff. That everyone's like, "You need to be on with Chrissy. Go on Simcast." Isn't <gasps> yes. That? And I never knew what it was, and then I did a little research, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, yeah, I feel like I." It's just a bunch there. of chicks. Sometimes we're like really much like this show. Sometimes it's makeup. Sometimes it's a uh, cultural stuff sometimes it's new it's just kind of like whatever's whatever's hot yeah. uh, always read Chrissy this super chat is because I feel bad for immediately leaving you earlier your earlier live stream to watch Kanye on Alex Jones I left right when you said it <laughs> you probably shouldn't have said it so I felt bad but it was worth it thank you no thank you always read yeah it was hard I was like someone in the chat said Kanye's on Alex Jones and as soon as I said that I'm like ah he's definitely gonna lose people <laughs> I was like, I was like, I can't blame you. I kind of want to leave and go watch it. But yeah, of course, that's that is what everyone is talking about today. And uh, God, I just want to like, well, I was going to even ask your thoughts before because you worked in Hollywood, what your take was on the Balenciaga thing, because they claim they didn't know the art direction like Balenciaga is throwing what the designer under the bus, the production yeah. team, whatever. They're yeah. like suing someone. But it's like. Do you think that's bullshit? Or do you think it's actually possible they could have it, not known? It's absolute bullshit. If you even have any idea how much work goes into compiling a singular photo shoot, I mean, everything from the hair, the makeup, the set design, the location, the storyboard, I mean, there is no missed detail. And the fact that they're trying to deflect the blame and put it off onto other people is just disgusting. They knew damn well what they're doing. And there's just no way it was an oversight. I mean, it was completely intentional. And I think it's just so gross that they're trying to shift the blame. I mean, everyone obviously who was involved should be held accountable and is responsible, but uh, they definitely knew what they were doing. It's so funny. So um, my wonderful mod NVIDIA in the chat was like, oh, yay has a new uh, logo. And I, and I, I just looked at his um, Twitter. I can't, I don't know if this is real or not. Like much like everything he oh, says, is this but this is his, is this his new logo? He posted this 23 <laughs> minutes ago. Yay. 24 <laughs> love everyone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. This is so funny. <laughs> that is just. I mean, like, that sums up the whole three hour show today on Alex. Uh, <laughs> wow. I've noticed that uh, this gal, Cassie Dillon, I just followed her today, but she's doing a really great job of clipping the three hour uh, Kanye appearance from Alex Jones. And, uh, uh, God, this is so, so funny. Alex Jones's stress laugh is hysterical. <laughs> Let's see how much of this I can. Uh, so we're gonna. I we're, gotta watch. I gotta watch. Uh, I'm gonna eat. So I'm like, I'm like an Italian. Manja, manja. Uh, so we're <laughs> gonna. You I gotta watch. I gotta, you gotta watch uh, my accounts because they've been frozen by the Jewish uh, banks. So <laughs> I, I need to watch my meals. Well, CNN says why people are evil Nazis. So I mean, I I, I disagree with both statements, but I get the. Yeah, I don't. Out. I don't like the word evil next to Nazis. I think we need to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Just because you don't like one group doesn't mean the other. Look, look, I love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, you can disagree with that. He, right, he's listen. good. Well, fuck me. <laughs> We're gonna go to work. I'm 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 the I'm the crazy one here. We're all crazy. The whole world's crazy. And and the whole power structure's coming down. This is absolutely lit. 
This is lit, 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 lit. <laughs> Number one show in the world right now. Everybody's singing everywhere. Trying to get beat. Oh my god! Imagine Kanye West was put on this earth to make Alex Jones look reasonable. <laughs> like that—that's his—that's his path. That's his uh, purpose. That is. Oh my call. god! He put on a fucking mask. Yes, he ended up putting on a mask. Well, yeah, he's got his mask. He's a superhero. <laughs> I represent the bad guys. David Ike's uh, little reptoids. So, oh my god! And Nick has with, a mask yeah. on too. We got Nick yeah. Fuentes, yeah. one of my yeah. best buddies. He works for us. This Where is, they just out. have these masks on He's hand. Over there with us. Oh, <laughs> I turned to Alex Jones. Oh, it's him. That's so Alex. What are we gonna do yeah. here? Yay! The Balenciaga situation. You had a great point during a break earlier about how they just need a new devil, but that's a devil to distract us from the fact that we become the devil. And that's kind of what you said. Can you repeat that? Well, oh my god, there was such a funny. <sighs> God, there's so many there's good clips. So there... material from the three hours. I mean, it's just nonstop entertainment. There's a lot. Let's what do you think about this? The so okay, this is hold. great for Infowars.com, though. I mean, like the, <laughs> yeah. the I I think Alex, I heard him saying like normally like what 29 or 30 million people watch, and he he said it was up like at least another 10 million or more. Yeah, he just said today. seven million at one point. 37. Yeah. Whoa, that's amazing. Yeah, he was like, this This was great, but it's going to cost me a lot of money, so go to InfoWarsStore.com. Oh. The bandwidth can't support this. <laughs> oh, my God. So, <laughs> we need to sell more vitamins. <laughs> think of all the thousands of topics we can cover in the limited time we have as you're about to get on a plane and go back to another state. People were saying, uh, people are saying, oh, he's wearing a, like, at first, I thought this was a Balenciaga mask because yeah. uh, it looked very similar to what Kim wore at, like, the Met Gala right. I don't know if it was last year. But, um, Someone else said that they that he's he was recorded saying that he actually feels safer like wearing a mask or wearing like almost like you know a kid wears sunglasses like it's actually a thing where he feels like if he covers his face he can be more himself which is a strain I don't know if that's like a developmental yeah. issue or something like that's not really normal you know yeah that's um, not normal but also I thought it was very I mean there's so many things you can dissect from the whole situation but the fact that he wore the mask that was. You know, obviously he said a lot of controversial stuff. I think that, you know, I don't agree with a lot of the stuff he said, but at the end of the day, I'm all for free speech. And, you know, I think everyone should have that right. Uh, the most upsetting part of the whole thing to me was the fact that he was wearing the mask. I think that, you know, given the current climate and everything that just happened mm. in Yaga, pretty much replicating exactly what we saw out of that sick book of Michael Borman's on that desk and as a prop, uh, looks exactly like, you know, those images. Yeah. And I just, I hated that. I wish you would have taken it off, but that's true. Yeah, it's like, how do you not realize that looks so similar? Even if it's not actually Balenciaga, like, how do you not yeah. realize that looks so similar? But just, like, he he doesn't realize, you know, things to not say. Like, he he's actually in a position, like, if he didn't walk off TimCast, and, like, clearly if today went a different way, He's mm -hmm. in a position, I think, to make a lot of good points because of his experience yeah. being married into the Kardashian clan right. for all those years. He's he's been at the most uh, elite levels of Hollywood. He what he's seen, he he knows shit for sure. Yeah. I don't know if they've fucked with his head yeah. or what kind of drugs they've given him or that he's currently on, but like he he's he's has everyone's ear right now, right. and I feel like he's pissing away an opportunity to yes. uh, unveil some like get people to listen to him so he can unveil some real truths. Yeah, I totally agree. It was a total missed opportunity. I, I really wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt, honestly, because I think that, yeah. you know, he's pissing off all the right people, which is a good, great first step. Uh, but yes, he had the whole ear of the country and I, I think he, he just blew it. I mean, that's not how we're going to get through to people. And at this point in time, we just need to focus on uniting people and bringing people together. And while I understand his, you know, ultimate message here, I think that, it could have been addressed differently and it could have been worded differently. So I am bummed about that. And I think he would be the perfect person to expose all of the gross Hollywood corruption. And it's a bummer that he did not take advantage of that. And not everyone is taking the time to be like, this is what he meant. Here is what he's coming from. He's speaking about a spiritual war. He's, um, you know, he, he's trying to like poke at the sacred cow. Like he's, he's, trying to say we need to love our enemies and love yeah. our neighbor and love people who think differently than us but instead of saying that he goes i like nazis 
Yeah. And, uh, and it's like, well, the average person is not going to like take time to be like, what did he mean by that? Let's look into his past and his history and how he usually communicates. No, most people are going to hear that and disregard him immediately. Precisely. And he's giving them the perfect sound bite to just use the clip. Cause you know, that's all anyone does. The attention span nowadays, is like three seconds. So that's all you're going to hear. And that's it. They're not going to take the time, as you said, to expound upon the fact that he, you know, had a different message overall. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish that he could have worded it differently. So I, it sucks. And I, I do wonder what's been done to him as a result of some MK Ultra or yeah, that's what people will be interested in. Like what talk about those texts between you and your and maybe he did and I missed it. Those texts between him and his trainer where yeah. he was threatening to take his kids away and put him on more drugs and like Yes. That's yeah. crazy so to me. They've been discussed here and it was just like the same thing over and over again. The first the first hour was a little bit more there was a little bit more meat to that. It was a little bit more focused on like, you know, Jesus and and this mm -hmm. battle that we're fighting, but as the time progressed, it was just like, I, I like Nazis. I love Hitler or this and that. And I'm just like, really? Right? It's like, and it's like, Kanye, if you're seriously running for office, like you're going to need to be able to speak on international issues. Yes. And like when he was, when he was thrown questions that, that dealt with that, he'd be like, uh, Nick, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's like, he's going to have to figure exactly. out. I know. I, I, I said that earlier too, but regarding the, uh, Tim cast, like, yeah, I kind of I kind of understood where he was coming from with Tim, like not acknowledging what the point he was trying to make. Um, but I don't think it was right for him to just get up and walk out. If you're really seriously trying to be president, you should probably be able to sit there and have a conversation and elaborate on your thoughts. Um, but also, you know, be able to speak more profoundly on the issues that are plaguing America, because God knows there's plenty of them for the time mm -hmm. being. <laughs> Let's see what Elsie says here. This new stuff. Uh, what else is on your radar? Because there, there's a lot. What do you think about the Ukraine war? <laughs> uh -oh. What do you think about FTX and Bitcoin? Uh -oh. There's so many topics. Like a pop Nick. quiz. <laughs> oh, he well, said uh... Nick. <laughs> like a pop... This is like he's in a 12th grade pop FTX quiz. And Bitcoin. And there's so many topics. <laughs> Nick? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, in terms of Ukraine oh and Russia, I haven't really seen so much of that in the news. I'm, of course, pro-Putin. I'm very pro-Russia. He's rooting for Putin? Um, you know, I am also. Let's go. Yeah. So I should send them rooting for Putin shirts. <laughs> uh, wow. I made those as a joke, by the way. I just think it's fun to say. Uh, uh, on what? the spectrum. Let's see. That, oh, then I could say I love. I, I did not consent. I do. What jacket is this? Like, did he steal this from a race car driver? I don't know. I was tr I was wondering the same thing. I, I mean, understand. It seems like the more money somebody makes, the worse they dress. <laughs> love Thank Hitler. you. I was. I, I even said the same thing about Nick too. I think he's been wearing that sweatshirt for like three days straight. Yeah, I'm like, did he just pack a knapsack? Like, did he get dressed? <laughs> he packed in a hurry. He's like, I have one hoodie. It's not even a nice one. It's a zippy. It's like a yeah. lost and found gym class hoodie. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. I do love the Zionists. I love everyone. The, the, the Zionists cannot tell me who I can love and not love. I don't think like that. I think more like someone that's on the spectrum says that's what they want to huh. claim. Well, let me be on the spectrum of love because love but that's a good t-shirt. I love Hitler. That's a bar. That's a bar. I'm joking. Well, and I think what, too, the, and, and, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> wow. But you know, like you can't, He's not a person that can be controlled. Like, like you know, there's maybe mental illness there. There's maybe abuse there. He's obviously like a very creative individual, so there might be some her inherent like ADD going on. Yeah, definitely. There's there's no like version of him that's controlled and eloquent and composed. So I know, and I wanted to. I really wanted to like that aspect mm -hmm. of him. That's a you know a great trait, but we got to refine uh, the message just a little bit. If we want to reach a large audience, I think if Kanye ran as a Democrat and he actually had his shit together, huh. he could all fucking win. Wow. <laughs> it's a missed opportunity. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> He's too red pilled, I guess, to run as a Democrat. I know it would be a little bit of a sellout. It is but... hard. It's hard to trust him though, because like, He's very, for most of his life, establishment, A-list celebrity. And it seems yeah. overnight he's become this, like, alt-right anti-Semite. Yeah. Rhymes. 
And uh, it just, and so it's like, he was fully with Balenciaga up until the point that they dropped him. So it's yeah. like, you're, you're going to commend Hollywood and commend the evils. It's like, this isn't the first campaign that Balenciaga has put out. That's been like sus. Like they, they've been this way for a long time. It's like, you're telling me you should have walked away from them a lot earlier. If you saw this, it just seems like, mm, yeah, he's awesome. only very recently walking the walk because they took it, everything away from him. Not everything. Yeah. He still, that's the thing too. Like, Oh, they shut down all my banks. It's like, Kanye, you're not like living with five roommates in Astoria, Queens. Like you still have a billion dollars. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> that is a point i hadn't i hadn't considered that about him uh not being the first one to walk away i kind of forgot that they were the one to cancel him and so now right. he's coming forward in this movement and it's just like i want to know how he got connected with nick fuentes and milo do you do you know the story on that i don't i really don't like i know nick fuentes helped trump and yeah. i guess milo felt wronged by trump and he like yeah. sunk a lot into him and uh there's even a like a um, one of milo's true social posts that i put up on my last live stream where he was like you know basically like trump fucked me over and i'm gonna take revenge on the gop like i'm gonna i'm gonna make it my life's goal to like to to take down the party yeah. And so people have been thinking like, oh, is that what he's doing? Is Milo just, you know, pulling the strings of Kanye? And I don't know. I've also heard that like Milo and Nick are involved because they both understand populism. I see Milo as almost like a young gay Roger Stone in that he's like very snazzy dresser, politically involved, like a, a kind of a scene stir. But I, I too am stumped as to how and why, uh, the boy with one sweatshirt is is involved <laughs> with all <of> this. <laughs> do you also? I've I've been trying to get to the root of it, and everyone that I've asked doesn't know. But what did Trump do to Milo to make him turn on him? Oh God, what was it? I pulled up before. I think um, I don't know if anybody in the chat remembers. Let's see, what did. I think Milo was, he was definitely among like the early, can early canceled. Like he was on the Trump train, I think early on, like he might've been canceled in 2015 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Let me pull this up. Uh, is this reputable? The guardian Milo claims he set up Fuentes dinner to make Trump's life miserable. A fallout from Trump's meeting with the with Nick Fuentes continues. A far right activist has claimed the meeting was set up meant to make Trump's life miserable. Uh, they reported that in an attempt to send a message to the former president, Milo, uh, a right wing provocateur, a former Breitbart editor helped arrange for Fuentes to travel to Mar-a-Lago. Trump dined with Fuentes and Ye on November 22nd. Trump said Ye was invited to dinner and unexpectedly showed it up with three of his friends. Uh, speaking to NBC, Yiannopoulos said he came up with a plan for Fuentes to travel with Ye and hopefully gain access to the former president. I wanted to show Trump the kind of talent he's missing out on by allowing his terrible handlers to dictate who he can and can't hang out with, Yiannopoulos said. I also wanted to send Trump a message uh, that he systematically repeated, repeatedly neglected, ignored, abused the people who love him the most, the people who put him in office. And that kind of behavior comes back to bite you in the end. I mean, this is true. There is such a yeah. big uh, group of Trump's base that are, that are never going to forgive him for pushing the vax. And uh, that he was good. he was in charge when the lockdowns kicked off. So I agree. Uh, I, I understand that. Um, Indianapolis was once a leading figure in the alt right movement, but has been banned by most social media networks. And lost a book deal in 2017 after appearing. Oh, this is why he got canceled. He kind of uh, was appeal appearing to endorse uh, like pedo stuff. I think he said he oh. got molested and like said something to the like it was a it was like a bad take. Like he was almost like I don't I don't remember exactly. I don't know if somebody in the chat remembers exactly his words on it, but it was like a just a bad take oh. <laughs> on that. Okay. Um, he told NBC he arranged the meeting to make just make Trump's life miserable because he was aware the news of the dinner would leak. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, so many theories on the whole thing. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't 
real and what's not. I know <laughs> what it, what is presented to us to be a distraction. It feels like a distraction. Right. And it's like, so what else is going on behind the scenes? Like, right. I don't know. And with Kanye on Alex Jones, just a whole distraction from, by the way, Elon announcing today that, neural that the brain chip is ready. Yes. <laughs> what the hell? Like that should be. Uh, I know. I don't like that. I really don't like that. I don't like that at all. That does not sit well with me. And everyone, all of the, I mean, it seems like a good majority of conservatives are like, oh yeah, Elon, free speech. I mean, yeah, if he's going to do good things for free speech, that's great. I will commend him for that. And, you know, getting rid of the child trafficking that's going on on Twitter, also necessary. But I don't really think it's free speech until Alex Jones gets his account back. And also, are we really overlooking the Neuralink stuff? I mean, that is yeah. issue number one for me. They'll be like, look, everyone gets their account back, including yeah. Alex Jones. All you have to do is put this chip in your brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem for me. That's a huge problem for me. That's very sus. And more people should be talking about it. Uh, here is the point in the show where Kanye West turns InfoWars into an open mic. Uh, but, I mean, dude, <laughs> the design, you're a designer. Can we just kind of say, like, you like the, the you like the uniforms, but that's about no, it. No, we, we, no, I, th there's a lot of things that I love about Hitler. Uh -oh. A lot of things. Oh, no. Hey, uh, Netan, what did you think about that, Netan? Oh, my gosh. This is insane. You are an insane person. How could you say something? It's okay that- So let me ask you, you like the Azog Battalion because they openly howl Hitler. They're the leftovers of World War II. They support Zelensky and attacking Russia. So you like the Azog Battalion. I love- He's like, I have no idea what you just said. I have no <laughs> knowledge. I, have, I know very little of history. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, that would be a Nick question. I guess I understand why he had uh, so many handlers. This is yeah, hilarious. I'm not going to deny. Like this is this is weeks of content for yeah. for all us YouTubers. I want to say with Ben Shapiro, he was so disrespectful to his employee Candace Owens for speaking out against me, and that just showed you another level of this kind of control that's out there. No, I agree. Mm. I like Candace. She has a lot of courage. She's a really smart, beautiful lady. Really defended you. Uh, but I mean, are you saying Ben Shapiro's got her on a leash? Oh, I think it's pretty obvious. I want to say, <laughs> uh, thank you for making these clips, Cassie Dillon. That was good. I see. I like that. I would like to know more about Ben Shapiro having Candace Owens on a leash at the fucking daily wire. That's the stuff we need. To yeah. Get. And like, and what, what is making you say that? Like what conversations have you had with Candace that, cause they're, they seem close. Like they were both seen out together with the White Lives Matter shirt. So it's like they're friends. Yeah. But I think what there can must you have say been about some, that? I think there must have been some backlash after that White Lives Matter ordeal, obviously, from Ben Shapiro, because obviously the Daily Wire is run by a bunch of those people. So um I don't oh my know. God. This is a clip. Oh my God. Thank you. So Cassie, this is really making my life easy. Yay says he has practiced Chinese water torture on himself. He then breaks into song about the Clintons coming to uh, finish him off. Alex Jones looks flustered again. Looked at every possible outcome. I've practiced Chinese water torture on myself. <laughs> I, would, I, I would like skip along Malibu in front of my house and oh, sing, no. when the Clintons come to kill me, how is it going to be? What are they going to do to kill me? Oh, Wait a no. second. Netton, what do you have to say about this? Oh Netten, my don't God. Say Look at Alex. What I'm trying to get at here is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a rare day when Alex Jones has no response. <laughs> There's so much. This is like, this is a gift. I, I don't know. I would say ultimately, anytime something like this happens, it's like, uh, it's a distraction. I don't know. Oh, right. Okay. So let's see. Let's see if we can get some more super chats. Truth Wizard, thank you. When you speak the truth, those who are seeking, are the ones who will hear it. Dressing it up and ob obfuscating the words is obviously not the move. We are to walk the path of Christ. Ooh. Oh, that maybe that that explains why um like you were called to the Bible yeah. and like that when that was happening to you. That's pretty yeah. cool. 
Uh, reptilian research redux. Milo defended the grown man who made him his B when he was 14. Yikes. Ooh. Yeah, that's not going to go over no matter what side you're on, I don't think. maybe. Well, maybe 2022 liberals would, would love that. <laughs> yeah. That's right. uh, SD Zero, he said he was asking for it. He was in control. Yikes. Not great. Not good. Uh, Mike, yeah, I mean, it's like the, maybe that would have gone over, uh, honestly, this year with, with how disgusting things have gotten. Yeah. Uh, he told the story of him being groomed and molested, but he told the story as if it was a positive thing. Yikes. Yeah, he's definitely a little a little messed up. Uh, hello, K Max. What is Chrissy and Allison's views on Trump this time around? Did he respond poorly to the January 6th stuff, Kanye and Fuentes stuff? Does he just not have the fight anymore for this stuff? Hmm. Well, I think Trump is smarter than people give him credit for. I would hope that he learned some lessons from his last administration about really more closely evaluating the people around him because I think who he surrounded himself with last time, like stifled a lot of his efforts. So yeah, I would hope to see some changes. Um, The January 6th stuff, it's tricky because they kicked him off of Twitter like a couple of days after. So they really cut off his voice as soon as that went down. And anyone who, was there or knows the truth knows like he was encouraging people to be peaceful going to the Capitol was always a planned marching point he didn't like order us all to go there so and i just think yeah trump is a is a powerful guy but he has like the whole of the media and hollywood and like television after him so yeah that's what kind of makes me go back to thinking that he is the man for the job is the fact that they're still driving home the fact that they, you know, will do any, they'll stop at nothing to get rid of him. But at the same time, I still can't get past certain issues like the jab, Operation Warp Speed. Why is it that he has not come forward and denounced it? I mean, I know that he has an ego. I know that he wants to be the hero of the day. But at the end of the day, there's literally people dying left and right. We're seeing insane cases of myocarditis and sudden death that we've never seen in young adults. I mean, it's very serious. And the fact that he ha- refuses to just come forward and denounce it is uh, very upsetting to me. Then January 6th is a whole nother issue. I, I Like you said, he, they did take away his platform, but not much has been done after the fact. Um, I mean, there's literally people rotting away in federal prison who are being treated just worse than an animal. I mean, mm-hmm. it's and unusual punishment they're not getting you know fair uh trials or anything like that so why where is he in all that why hasn't he spoken on that i know you know there's probably an art to the war but at the end of the day Mm -hmm. he could donate financially i mean these people need uh, there's a lot of attorney fees to be paid and they're suffering and i mean i'm sure they're just wiped out at this point so it'd be nice if he chimed in a little bit there um yeah and then, I mean, I would love to think that, you know, he said he was going to drain the swamp. I would I would like to give him the opportunity to finish it off, but I don't really think he did much his first time around. I know it's a huge job and it can't it doesn't happen overnight, but, I mean, he should have fired Fauci and all of his questionable, you know, people that were around yep. him at the time, and that didn't really happen either. So, I don't know. I don't know if he – the, the more time that passes, the more I just think this is all one giant fucking show and it's all political theater and i'm not putting my faith in any man i'm just yeah i'm i'm with jesus that's it he's the I only think one. the degree to which we can just hang on and keep as much as we can as locally as we can i feel yeah. like is that's huge for sure a safe path like i don't know everybody uh you know fulfill your second amendment rights as much as you can while you still can like prepare to the degree that you can don't, you know, yes, it's easy to lose hope on, on elections, but still vote anyway, I think. And uh, the, the worst thing would be to lose hope because that's what, that's what they want. They want you hopeless and apathetic and checked yeah. out of the, of the whole process. They definitely do. But I, that's why I think going, you know, focusing on a local level is the most important because that's where I think we have the most impact Obviously, they're going to continue to cheat however they can, but we got to start. Yeah. And it's also be interesting, like, who else is going to run? 
Who yeah. are the Democrats going to run? Are they really going to run Newsom? Uh, is it going to be Trump versus DeSantis? Uh, at one point, I heard that it was like a lock that Trump and DeSantis were going to run together. So who yeah. the hell know what's planned? Exactly. Oh, okay, Mexican. Thank you. Could either of you host a Kanye without getting censored? What would be your key approach to interviewing him? Would it be possible? Again, like I would probably approach it from like a a bimbo place. Like I would be like, I think my way in to find out about things that I think people want to know about would be like celebrity life, Kardashians, yeah, Chris Jenner. Like who to what you know what I mean? Like what is the degree to which Chris Jenner has control over everyone's lives? And um I would I would ask him, when did you start feeling like you were like, did you feel like it was a family business decision to phase you out of the marriage or like, you know, what I would ask about, like, yeah, how much he could talk about him and Kim and his own personal experiences and get it away from uh, what a lot of people would consider conspiracy theories and stuff that's easily. I mean, he's already said enough for people to dismiss him on, but. I would try to keep him grounded to his own personal experiences as much as possible because you can't really deny somebody their lived experiences. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, tell me about Hollywood. Tell me about the inner workings of, of just your life for all this time. You know, I think at one point he wanted to create a school to help um, like entertainers or Hollywood types, like get, get better deals, get better contracts. And it seemed like when he really started putting effort and energy into this is when they started to like call him crazy and bipolar and yeah. really like ratchet up this story about him or painting him as this villain. Cause he wanted to like offer a, uh, an alternative for people with bad deals in Hollywood, which I think is really curious. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I would, I would go for the Hollywood aspect of it too and want to know the inner workings of that I, and I think you could speak well on that you know I think if we're just leaving it I mean obviously that the situation today was very insightful but I would want to ask him specific questions about Hollywood and about the inner workings of you know all of the people that he met throughout that journey because we know there's a lot there that has yet to be uncovered so I think sticking to questions that I know he could answer would be a good start hmm. <laughs> like who's gonna have him on their show after this well, I would. I already. Re of course I would. I mean, other than us, like we, you know, I have no standards. <laughs> so of course. And it would be so a great get. Have him on, he's probably more likely to accept our invite. So <laughs> that's true. Oh, my God. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if he does do more shows after this. Uh, Matt Deckard, when did you put the sound padding in? That's it. That's my question. Because I don't know. You mean this? Um, Gosh year and a half ago, maybe when I moved here, maybe two years ago. I don't know. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Anyway. Wow. Yeah. Maybe I will. He will be on Patrick on the Patrick bet David podcast. I haven't heard of that. I haven't heard of that one. Compound media would certainly have him. Yeah. Maybe I'll reach out. I'll keep tweeting at him. How do we get a hold of him? We will tweet. We will tweet it and be like, "Yay! I love the new logo. Definitely doesn't look like a swastika. Keep it up." <laughs> <laughs> well, if you get if you get his contact, pass it on over to me. <laughs> I'd be like, "Yay! You need to make arm badges uh, for your fan base." <laughs> yes, I'm sure that's get some merch. A, his next uh, fashion line will be Nazi esque attire. Yeah. Head to toe. And how crazy that he still has to pay 200K a month in child support. Insane. Why does Kim Kardashian need 200K a month? I'm pretty sure she's doing just fine. She's doing fine. And didn't he lose millions like just yeah. in the last month? Yes. It's ridiculous. It's so crazy. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what are these kids eating? But like, <laughs> what? Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like jealous because i just i grew up on hand-me-downs and noodles and butter i'm like what is it these kids are living a fancy life yes i think they have everything we wish we did and more <clears throat> oh well i just hope that the kids will grow up like uh i don't know as well adjusted as they can be yes i hope so though i don't think it's possible <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i think having them on tiktok is a big mistake yeah, definitely not good. 
Um, Allison, what is coming up next for you? Where can people find you and follow you? What are your goals for 2023? And yeah. Um, that's a great question. I haven't even got that far. It's everything I can do to get from one day to the next with everything going on in the world. But um, definitely going to keep keep up with the show. It's a daily show. It's uh, Monday through Friday. So definitely stay tuned for that. We have, you know, all the latest content, hot takes, uh, all the juicy stuff posted daily, as I said, to OANN.com and Rumble. Um, and then other than that, uh, I don't know. I just got to keep powering through and try to get through this crazy time that we're living through. Biden really hurting us all. So uh, I guess, you know, if I don't get a a raise in the next couple of months. I might have to get a second job. Thanks, Biden. But uh, thanks, Biden. I know <laughs> there should be just a, a like a Biden only fans. Just like I am only doing this because of inflation. Um, but for your show, do you use a teleprompter? Like, do you write your scripts out in advance, or is it just all like rants? Yes, I write my scripts out in advance, so it's a little bit more of a formal approach. Uh, you know, prior to being at OAN, I would just go on these rants and tangents and just say whatever I wanted off the cuff. Um, but the show is a bit more structured, so it is uh, written on a teleprompter. All of the writing is my own with a little help from my producers. Um, but it's all original content, and uh, we try to keep it as real as possible. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty fun. As I said earlier, it's like kind of mo the more like controversial show on the network. And I, and I like to focus more on like the cultural aspect of things. I, I don't, I'm not, not trying to claim that I'm some like, you know, energy expert or financial extraordinaire. Uh, so I, I like to focus on more of the cultural topics that are affecting all of us. Um, but yeah, I like to keep it fun. I uh, should probably be better about posting on social media. I literally just made a Twitter when I got this job. So uh, that's new to me. So uh -huh. throw that. that's a good goal to have. Uh, yeah. That free speech is still alive and well. So yeah, I'll be working on that. If you'd like to follow me again, it's Allison's Rage page with one L on both does, Instagram and Twitter. Does anyone tell you you look like Amanda Pete? Amanda Pete. No, haven't got that one before. Oh my God. Do you know who she is? I don't even know who that is. She was in. She's hot. Don't worry. Okay. Um, okay. What is a good picture of her? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm seeing it. She, what the heck was she in? She's an actress. Okay. Like you're blonde. Oh. But, but well, maybe it's awesome. in the eyes. What was she in? Okay, cool. Everyone tells me I look like Lady Gaga, so it's nice. To really? Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a side profile thing only. Like this angle. Is nah, like you're cuter than her. <laughs> Thanks. She can't Every be purposely makes herself ugly. So. Yeah, she's icky. I feel like she's involved in like some suspect Hollywood stuff. Yeah, definitely very questionable. She questionable. Someone in the chat thinks you look like Kathy Bates. All right. All right. Enough, you guys. <laughs> Everybody follow Allison. Watch her on OAN. Check out Allison at Large. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you to everybody in the chat for your comments and questions. And thank you to Kanye West for providing us with so much content and laughs. And uh, we will see you next time. Bye.